Hey, what is going on guys? Expert Fusion here and in this video, I'm going to be doing my review for Fear the Walking Dead finale. Um holy shit. So I know I haven't done Fear the Walking Dead, you know, reviews for any episodes because I mean, I just didn't really have the need to do it. I'm definitely going to be doing it for The Walking Dead. But after this episode, I really wanted to talk about it because holy shit. This was a great episode. This was one of the best episodes I've ever seen in any Walking Dead series, not just Fear the Walking Dead. Fear the Walking Dead is by far the best Fear the Walking Dead episode, but even compared to some other Walking Dead episodes, honestly, it compares with a lot of the better ones. It is just so good. Now, I'm counting both of the episodes as one finale because how they did it like that with uh, 14 and 15 being the same day. I'm just going to count them as one episode as a whole. It was just absolutely amazing. Honestly, I like if we're counting them separately, I might have liked 14 a little bit better than 15, not going to lie. But at the same time, they were both very amazing. So I just put them together and just count them as a huge finale. One of the longest finales we've ever had. And it was just so amazing, man. It was just incredible. Now I'm going to go over all the good things and then some of the bad things. There were a few bad things that I have to talk about, but that's not, you know, a big deal or anything like that. Um, these bad things. Honestly, I'm very, very surprised that they made this a very good episode. Because for The Walking Dead Season 2, it's been good all around. It just had a few, you know, not so good episodes. Like I liked, um, I didn't like the first two episodes that much, uh, but then I liked episodes like three to five were pretty good. Six and seven, I didn't really like the whole Celia thing. Didn't really care about episode eight, nine, or ten. You know, it was just a whole time period. I just didn't really care much about it. Um, but then once we started getting into the Chris and Travis stuff, that's what I was most interested in, to be a hundred percent honest. And then from like episode eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then the finale. Just absolutely amazing. All those episodes um, were just so great. So starting off with one thing that we have was Ophelia. And I'm, I really don't know where the hell Ophelia is going. I mean, that's one thing I wish they touched on a little bit more is actually where she's going. We know she's going to America. At least that's what it seems like she's doing. But why? Like, we, we saw her, you know, the flashbacks of episode 12 where her, like, um, fiancé or whatever, she was, like, supposed to be there. Is she Does she think her fiancé is still out there or something? Because what are the chances you're going to find him? I mean, it's just not something that is common to find somebody out there like that i mean yes going to specific places that you think he might be at okay that's a different story but you're just going out into the open all alone with like not much food or water or anything you're just i don't know i just don't feel like that's something she should be doing but i do think that it makes sense i mean it, it makes a little bit of sense but at the same time it's, i really wish they touched on exactly what she's trying to do and why she just left without telling anybody, too. That was kind of annoying. I mean, and it just came out of nowhere, too. It's not like she was, like, in a tough time or anything. Like, yeah, she does think her dad's dead. But at the same time, I don't think her dad's dead. And that's another thing I want to talk about. Where the fuck is Daniel, man? I know he's not dead. Because if they, if he was dead, they would show the death on screen. They wouldn't show his death off screen and just expect us to think he's dead. Because that's just not how good deaths are. And so... I'm just really, really confused about that. Like the whole Chris thing too. Um, how when they said when he said he was dead, and then he went to the flashback. But before he they went to the flashback and he said he was dead, I didn't believe it at first because I was like, oh, if I didn't see it, I'm not gonna believe it. And then they show the flashback. But Daniel, they actually didn't show anything. He would just burn down the place and it just ended. It, it, he they didn't show him dying or anything. So I still think he is alive. And I thought that one dude that was shooting at Ophelia and came up, that one old dude that was like, welcome to America, or whatever, I actually thought that was going to be Daniel when he was walking up. I thought that would be really cool, but at the same time, it'd be like, well, why the hell were you shooting at him, or at her? But, you know, it was still just really, I liked, I liked Ophelia in this episode because um, just a few badass Walker kills, especially in the very beginning. Uh, she, like, took care of all of Walkers. That was really cool to see that. I really like the directing and the writing in this episode. That's one of the things that was best. And whoever did writing and directing this episode should do every episode, to be 100% honest. I mean, it was really good. Really freaking good. Alright, so now that we're done talking about Ophelia, let's, let's talk about let's talk about Nick and the Col Colonia. So, Nick and the Colonia, I, let me just, I wish it was better than what it was. You know, they were hyping it up to be this big thing. It kind of reminds me of the season 3 finale of The Walking Dead. How they're hyping it up, oh, the governor's attacking, it's going to be some crazy war, and then it ended up they just attacked for a second and left. I mean, it was kind of underwhelming. And as much as 
it was okay. It was a little underwhelming. I mean, yes, I understand it made more realistic sense that they left, that Nick and the group left so they wouldn't be attacked by these people because they don't have that many guns. They don't have weapons at all, really. They'll get destroyed by them. So it was, you know, obviously smart of them to leave, but I just, I wanted to see something. And yes, they did do it well. I liked how Alejandro stayed behind and pulled the bus out and the walkers came. But there's a few other things I had because I didn't like how they showed it off screen. You know, they just had the walkers come out and then they started shooting at the walkers and then it just ended and then it came back to them and they were all dead. I would rather have them actually showed them being eaten by the walkers because I, I don't buy that, that they were actually eaten by the walkers. Well, not eaten, but bitten and turned by the walkers. Like, they had a lot of guns and there wasn't that many walkers. Yeah, there was a lot, but they had all those guns and all those people. I don't see how they all were you know, killed, and it's not like they were cornered or anything, there's walls, yeah, but you can hop them and get out of there pretty damn easily, so I have just no idea, I wish they actually showed us, what I was hoping would happen is something a little different, I mean, yes, they could have just shown us what would happen with the walkers and how they all got bitten and stuff like that, but what they could have done, which I thought this would have been really cool, but at the same time, it would have been a lot, what I actually, is what I thought was going to happen, um, when he took out the bus, Alejandro, I thought maybe there was going to be a gas tank around there, like maybe in a whole, like in the middle of a um, a whole group of uh, those those gang members. How sick would that be if Alejandro just drives that bus straight into the gas tank? Because he knows he's going to die anyways, he might as well. Straight into the gas tank and boom, it just explodes and it just kills all of them. I think that would have been really, really cool if they did that. And I'm kind of sad they had a missed opportunity to do that. Um, but since they did do what they did with the walkers, that was still cool, but I wish they actually showed them being bitten by the walkers and not just turning, and kind of just was underwhelming, I feel like, for this big battle and whatever we expected, but it doesn't matter, because the best part of the episode, the best part of this finale, the the one that made me just absolutely love it, was Travis kicking the living shit out of those two guys. Now... This scene, man, this scene was probably the most powerful scene in Fear the Walking Dead and one of the most powerful scenes in The Walking Dead history. Holy shit, man. I just, I loved how they did it, how they put us in Travis's shoes. We didn't know if Chris Chris was alive or not. We didn't. You know, they came here and Chris wasn't there. We were all curious as to what the hell happened. And we we knew they were lying when they were telling us that he flew out and died or whatever. And, And then you just see the flashback and... You just see Chris on the floor. Chris was the last one I expected to die. I'm dead serious. I did not think Chris was going to be killed. I thought, you know, what everyone was expecting, you know, Chris was going to be in the next season. He was going to be the big villain in the next season. He was going to come back and there's going to be some father. You know, Travis would have to kill Chris or something like that, you know, kill his own son. But no, man, they completely surprised everybody, which I'm completely fine with because, honestly, I would not have liked, you know, doing like a, oh, he's a big villain or whatever, I feel like that would have been really dumb, I mean, I don't know, I just felt like it would have been too predictable and just not very interesting in my opinion, but just how they did it by showing the flashback and then panning out and just seeing um, Derek pull up the gun and just shoot Chris in the head, and then Travis just, oh my god, man, I I didn't like Travis that much before this, after this episode, he's probably my favorite character in Fear the Walking Dead, holy shit, man, he just literally fucking just mauled the both of them and i just i loved it i absolutely loved it and you know he's madison was just banging on the window you know all that shit it was just so good it was so fucking good and then he um banged uh oscar's head i think it was oscar i forget that one dude um banged his head with the door and then you know he died later on and that caused problems it was just all really well done and I loved all of it. I really loved all of it. Now, Strand staying behind. A lot of people were confused about that. Why was Strand staying behind? you got to realize, Strand, I mean, he doesn't have that much of a caring for these people. I mean, they're not like he's family or anything. So, I mean, can't expect him to go everywhere. But Strand is kind of like, holy shit, these guys are psychopaths. I mean, Strand thought, you know, Travis was way out of hand for what he did. I mean, Madison did make rules. And, you know, they literally he murdered those two kids like just murdered them they're not even like old they're they're basically kids they're like in their 20s you know it's just it was crazy man and and i kind of agree with um strand for stay behind i mean they have a safe hotel well i mean now it's kind of chaotic with everybody probably freaking out over what happened but still it's a safe hotel and 
Strand might, might have stayed back to protect him, to be 100% honest. Maybe to stall them back, you know, say, oh, they got away, you know, no bothering going after them. Because you know, Strand cares about them. He doesn't care enough about them to stay with them. But he cares enough about them to make sure they're alive and safe. So, Strand has good intentions. I'm, I know he does. And, um, yeah. So, and then we get Nick and Luciana coming across the border and getting shot up by these people. Now, I have no idea who the hell these people are. Probably some border patrol type people. No idea why they're shooting at them. I've, I don't, I really don't know. I mean, I'm curious to see what happens with this. I do feel like these people are the same people that, um, the one dude that met Ophelia. So I do think that Nick is going to meet up with Ophelia and they're going to come back together and then strand in the hotel. I have no fucking idea what's going to happen with them. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Daniel. Maybe Daniel will come across the hotel, and maybe that'll be a little thing there. And then Travis. I don't have no idea where the hell they're going, man. I don't know where they're gonna go from there. But hopefully north. Uh, well, they're gonna head to the border because that's what um, Alejandro said. So they'll eventually get to the border, and hopefully they'll all meet up at least by episode four or five in season three. Because I don't want them to be split up anymore. I mean, I like it when groups get split up in shows because it does give us more time to actually focus on specific characters and get specific development from those specific characters. But I don't want them to be, you know, apart from each other forever. I think they should come back eventually. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next one, and peace out.